Uh, hey, Ian. Yeah, what's up? Why couldn't the eleven-year-old get into the pirate movie? Uh, why couldn't the eleven? Get... Yeah, why couldn't he? <laughs> because it was rated R. Well, you know, uh, there comes a time in every man's life where he has to decide what his priorities are, and I think that this one, this podcast, has gone off my list. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it was it was good. Everybody, it was a good run. You know, the still, I think this is the second time I've broken up with you, and I think the last time was on this it podcast. Is. I think so. it is. <laughs> oh. Okay. How you doing? <laughs> oh, uh, I'm all right. Hello, everyone. How are you doing today? We're back with episode two of Sonic Comic Chaos. Uh, today we are talking about the first Sonic Universe arc of the Preboot Universe, although kind of not really. We'll get into that. But uh, Ian, introduce yourself. We didn't do this last time. What's your YouTube channel? No biggie. I'm Ian Waffles on YouTube. I don't make videos because I'm taking forever to make one. Uh, but, you know, I've got some stuff there if you're interested. I've got stuff about cute anime girls and or My Hero Academia. So if you're into either of those two topics, I do analysis videos on such things. Sometimes, whenever I get to it. Uh, otherwise, I just talk about Sonic, which is what we're doing today. Ian, you're thinking too small. You should talk about cute anime girls that are in My Hero Academia. That are in My Hero? Uh, couldn't find one. No, actually, I did make one about one. <laughs> oh, really? I, I think. Uh, no. But uh, uh, I'm ahead. I'm ahead of the curve. But today, we're talking about a, a Sonic anime girl who is literally on fire. So we'll see what happens yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, real quick before we get into it, uh, you all may remember Ian died last episode. A uh, horrible accident. Um, and as such, his connection to this world's a little shaky. So his audio is not great. Um, yes. I was, I've been trying to get in some contact with some people. Uh, I found a princess on Craigslist. Uh, I thought I could mm-hmm. get some, bring him back to life. But, you know, as right. soon as I brought up the, uh, the idea of making out with my friend's corpse, uh, she suddenly stopped talking to me. So, uh, we're still working on that, but, uh-huh. uh, yeah. So hopefully we will be able to bring Ian back to life and hopefully his audio will be better, uh, within the next few episodes. So, well, that- uh, yep. Well, and I really appreciate that you did that for me. Cause, but it was really weird too. Cause you sent me the message. And I thought it was like a really strange part where she was like, you know, I'll make out with the corpse if he's like a hot animal. But if not, then like, I'm not down. And I said, like, yeah, you know, like I in some, you know, in some sense, I, I see myself as a like a hot animal, you know, mm-hmm. like I'm here. Mm-hmm. I'm down to clown. But she wasn't yeah. down. So, you know, <laughs> it's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, I mean, I can guarantee next episode it will not be better, but in some future one, it will be better. But anyway, yeah, I've ordered so... a new mic. I've ordered a new uh, soul, I guess, and or mic. <laughs> so, a new soul. <laughs> All right. But anyway, so let's get into this. So Pirate Plunder Panic. So this starts with issue 55 of Sonic Universe for the those of you who want to read along with us uh part one of four so let's go so immediately this starts off horribly confusingly because it talks about how blaze has been going across the mobius or i'm sorry (coughs) sonic's world uh to try and find the soul emeralds uh which is something that happened in the preboot universe but they very clearly show a shot of pirate plunder panic and they reference not pirate plunder of Treasure Team Tango, these stupid three-word titles, um, of Treasure <laughs> Team Tango. They show a shot of Treasure Team Tango, and they're talking about that, and then... So we see that, essentially, what happened is after Worlds Collide, Blaze and Marine went back to uh, Soul World, which you would expect, but uh, Amy and Cream went along with them. And so they're fighting, and there's not really anything to say here. My first note was, uh, uh, wait, Blaze remembers Worlds Collide? Because it because ve- it seems like in that first uh, arc of the main book, Sonic's the only one who remembers Worlds Collide until he touches the thing. Yeah, maybe so it's because confusing. it's a contrivance. But I could that, be there wrong. Is that. <laughs> there, that, you know, it's probably that. Well, my theory. Oh, sorry. Yeah. What? Um, yeah. What's your What's your in universe theory to make it make sense? Because I would love to hear it. <laughs> I think that Blaze's world either wasn't affected or was much less affected by it than um than Sonic's universe was. And so essentially uh-huh. to Blaze, nothing's really changed. Uh-huh. Um that's that's what I think. I think that she just simply was not as affected by it. Um okay. and I well, think that's a cool that's a cool way to look at it because she also clearly remembers things from preboot, but I would assume that since all these characters are 
um, Sonic, like their main Sonic characters. It just means that lore wise, everything that they did in that story arc uh, happened. So, yeah. <laughs> so well, all what of was Treasure con- Team Tango is canon. <laughs> Which is great because that story's great. But yeah, so we're good. <laughs> Shadow loving his bike is canon. Uh, but so. Yes. Uh, but yeah, well, because like one thing. No, nah, it's gone. My uh, train of thought derailed. It's in a pit. It's on fire. <laughs> uh, okay, so it, I mean, it's, this whole thing is just a really big fight scene at the beginning. Uh, Blaze, we we set up a bit where she's not great with working with others. Audience, you're gonna notice something throughout this, and that's me and Ian not being able to say anything about this story. Um, yeah, I guess before I guess before we start, we should just do that. Like, what did we think overall of the story without specifics? Just more like, did we enjoy it? What was our vibe? Like, what did you know? Because if we don't have much to say, that kind of forebodes. <laughs> it's kind of foreboding. Yeah, <laughs> I enjoyed it. I think mm-hmm. if if someone were to come to me and they were essentially to be the way I was before we started this podcast, where they were like, you know, I read preboot, I really liked it, but I just, I don't want to, you know, go into the, the reboot continuity because I don't, I love the re- preboot continuity so much. I don't want to see it like get destroyed or whatever. I would recommend they read this um, simply because it's essentially the ending of the story arc that Flynn had been doing for most of his time on the book of, you know, Blaze throughout like um, backups in the main book and throughout Sonic Universe getting the Soul Emeralds. And so, the way I see it is like, yes, this is technically the first arc of reboot, but it's almost like a stealth, like last arc of preboot. Um, yeah, I agree. So like, I, I mean, again, it's nothing amazing. You know, it's, it's fairly, uh, fairly basic, but it's, it's fun for what it is. And I, yeah, I liked it. My main problem, uh, like, so my general thought is that I think it's kind of boring and that's just mostly because, uh, <clears throat> so it's Tracy Yardley writing this arc. Um, it's one of the few arcs he actually writes. Um, and oh, I just really? don't I Yeah, I just don't think that he knows how to make Marine funny. And he also doesn't know how to make Bean funny. Because my biggest problem with this whole arc is I hate Bean. Yeah, um, Bean was not, not great. Yeah. So there's a there's a lot of usage of him that just feels like the joke is obviously like, whoa, look at him. He's like getting in the way of the serious moment. Haha, <laughs> isn't he so goofy and silly? And that's not really how he was used before. He was usually used in lighthearted stories. Like, he was never used in plot-heavy stuff. And so there's scenes in here where main characters are trying to do things. And then he's just like, boy, howdy, guys. What if I just, like, did literally anything that could mess it up? And then conflict happens. And so the conflict doesn't feel enjoyable because this annoying, stupid idiot jerk face is coming in here and causing it. And the stakes are real. Like, there's real stakes here. Like, bad things could happen to these people. And he's just causing problems. And I'm like, no, I think you should just, like, kill him, Blaze. I think it'd be, I think it'd be fine. I don't, I don't think it'd go on your record, honestly. So uh, well, I mean, should... she's the monarch. <laughs> That's my who's going who's gonna, to who's, who's gonna tell? But Yeah, literally, who's going to tell? You're sending all the witnesses back home anyway. And a Marine, yeah. you know, she'll forget. <laughs> yeah. Well, I the thing. I, I completely 100 percent agree with you on Bean. Because normally I think Bean's fun. Like Treasure Team Tango, I think he's fun. But yeah, you hit the nail on the head where it's like in this situation, he doesn't fit. And I just found him incredibly annoying. Um Marine was a mixed bag for me. I think I enjoyed people's reactions to her. Like there's there's one bit where Amy is like, Marine, stop talking now. Like that, yeah. that was fun. Um, mm-hmm. I agree. You know, Marine was not great herself in this, though. Yeah, but um, that's generally where I'm coming from with most of this arc. While we talk about it, is like it's not terrible, but most of the time I was just kind of bored. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel that. But so, I guess, uh, yeah. But so, the book opens up. They're fighting. We find again. It's it's post worlds collide. They've uh. They've all shown up. They're fighting with... Uh, do we know who this... We don't know it's Captain Metal yet, but we know it's, like, not Whiskers um, right? at this point. And so... They're yeah, fighting. they clarify pretty early on that it like they're not entirely sure who it is. Yeah. I put, oh, th- okay. Uh, one bit... So they meet up with... So she meets up with Bean. One bit that I actually really like from Marine, and I don't know if it's just because Marine gets hurt... <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, it's when she loads the big firework into the cannon and it just explodes 
I mean, it probably I, is just I, because it's funny that it explodes in her face. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. My note is literally just Marine explodes and dies. Um, <laughs> Good riddance. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I wrote here a funny Marine joke, and I don't remember what it was in reference to. So, people reading the book, uh, you can figure out what I was talking about when I wrote that. Um, <laughs> Good luck. But so, uh, again, not much happens. <clears throat> Uh, they're on the ship and then uh, Blaze gets kidnapped and then they they kill, they shoot the boat and all the characters die at the end. <laughs> yeah, it was really um, brave of Tracy Yardley to kill off Amy, but I respect the yeah. decision honestly. Yeah, no, really, <laughs> I agree. Uh, and two children in the matter, in, in, in the process Well, as especially well. the children, that was the coolest yeah. part. Yeah, really. Oh, <laughs> um. But so, anyway, then we see... Uh, Captain Metal, who I wrote here. <clears throat> um, Captain Metal is really awesome, but gives me a headache when I think about continuity. Yeah, um, I was going to say, can you try to explain to me... I know he's a Metal Sonic, but which Metal Sonic? <laughs> I think he's supposed to... You remember Shadow Saga? Uh, yes. I think he's supposed to be the Metal Sonic that Shadow is fighting across dimensions and that they blow up with a cannon. Really? Okay. That's what uh, I assumed. I, my they thought, don't explain. Yeah, they don't explain which it is. My thought was since he comes, like, he comes, like, prepackaged with the uh, the Wily Egg, right? Like, the Wily Egg lands here? No, he says this thing just showed up one day. So it, okay, that so he's been here you, a while. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Well, and since this essentially serves as the conclusion to, like, Blaze's arc throughout Archie, I just assumed it would make sense to bring back him and again i don't know how else you would explain a metal sonic being here no that makes a lot of sense and i think i could be wrong i want to say blaze says something effective like oh i've met someone who looks like him so i i just think it's safe to assume it's uh all right it's, cool it's that yeah metal. i'd never I, I was always curious but yeah that seems like a good idea all right so now what you want to say issue 55 it, it's fun but practically nothing happens all right issue 56 pirate plunder panic part two of four uh, guess who's coming to dinner? Dot, dot, dot. Indeed. Um, and so it opens up with... They, they do this weird thing where, like, that modern comics do, where the characters don't have thought bubbles, they have thought boxes, but Blaze really only has them during the beginning of the book. I don't know. Yeah, I've noticed that kind of stuff in, uh, in a lot of the Archie stuff. Yeah. I, I don't know, but so we get being he's, he's I I noticed the stuff and the stuff and the stuff. This is riveting commentary. Thank this you. Is, well, I mean, <laughs> this is about the best commentary you're going to get from this story. But so, oh uh, man, was this podcast a bad idea? No, I think I think Sonic was a, the bad idea. We're innocent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Um, but so we see that the that shock of all shocks, uh, they didn't kill. Uh, Amy, Cream, and Marine. Uh, Cheese is dead, though. But so, you know, that's sad. But... No, they all made it. So, one thing I wrote here was like, what about the rest of the crew? Were there like a bunch of koalas manning the ship? <laughs> They're super. No, I think she told them to get off. I'm pretty okay. sure there's like a line where she's like, get in the dinghies or whatever, you dinghy. And they're like, thank you, Captain. You're the best. That, I, that You know what? Given the fact that I forgot about that, I wonder if that was like an editor's note. Where it's like, oh, what happened to the koalas? <laughs> so they're like, good point. Um, I, I wrote, I feel robbed of seeing Amy fight sharks because we do not see Amy fight sharks. Uh, True, but dolphins. seeing dolphins kidnap them is also very funny. So <laughs> yeah, well, it's a cool, it's a cool callback to Sonic Rush Adventure. Um, you could write on a dolphin a level of that. Yeah. Uh, plus, um, it's just cute seeing them uh, play with Marine like she's a ball. So yeah, cool. yeah, that's cool. The whole scene, um, the whole scene's pretty cute. I liked them in the in the boat. Really, the the yeah. part that just annoys me is anytime Bean shows up and he's just like, "Hey, Blaze, all your friends sure are dead. That's really funny, <laughs> ha ha ha." And she's trying to like have yeah. a moment and like be a person, and I'm like, "Go away." <laughs> oh yeah, I mean that's we are seeing here like the last like semblance, uh, and I mean like in you know reboot Archie as a whole, not so much just this arc the last semblance of Sonic characters being allowed to be people. Um, yes. <laughs> like the, 
like the next arc that we're going to talk about after this one, there's very much a, a moment from that. I like, so we see uh, the line I was talking about where Blaze talks about how she fought a Metal Sonic before, and then we just get Metal's, uh, Metal's backstory where it's like, we found pieces of a robot. And okay, do you know who this um Dr. Rat- Ratchet turn is supposed to be? Um, is this a character? I'm wondering if he's a character in Sonic Rush Adventure. I don't remember. I think I have to assume he's just supposed to be like this world's. No, that doesn't even make sense because Neg is this world's equivalent to Robotnik. Yeah. Oh, whatever. So he found him. He put him back together, and then uh, Metal killed him. And he he's been using different robot parts to up, upgrade himself. Uh, cool stuff. There's a there's a cute panel of Blaze drinking this this drink that Bean gets her. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then the so, girls get kidnapped again uh, oh. by uh, these little like tiki robots. Yeah, I there these tiki robots, which were so memorable. I have zero notes about them. Uh, but <laughs> but so they they go, and I wrote because so metal brings Blaze into his little hidey hole, and I wrote, "You think metal would have learned? Ex- you think metal will have learned by now? Exposing to your enemies is a bad idea." They never learn. That's the that's the one thing yeah. villains never hear. They they can't they help never, themselves. Yeah. <laughs> well, was, well, especially since you think she's literally six sevenths of the way to being unstoppable, and the thing that she needs to become unstoppable is a foot away from her. Like, but I've maybe. already won, so who cares? <laughs> you, you haven't though. Uh, I've basically won. That's how it works. <laughs> Man, I would be the best supervillain ever because I like because uh, c- I'm always like oh man but w- but what if though like so I like I would like kill my nemesis and then I would incinerate them and then I would spread their ashes like to four corners of the globe before I finished my master plan. You are I mean you're a, clearly a terrible villain because you underestimate the power of friendship that he would come back oh, to life. Course. And you wouldn't be able to do a single thing. You have to you have to put that those ashes through acid. Make sure there's nothing that remains. <laughs> yeah. It also makes course, sure he doesn't course. have a, a, a an evil clone somewhere that will turn against you because he's good now. Wait. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because the <laughs> evil clone, seeing the sacrifice of his yeah. good counterpart. Oh, uh, uh, there's too, there's too many variables when you're a villain. You gotta you gotta worry about yeah. way too much. <laughs> yeah. But so um we see that. Uh, Captain Metal shows Blaze the Ego War, which is the uh, the Death Egg Wily thing from uh, Worlds Collide. Which I do like. Um, I like that idea a lot. Oh, I I thought it was cool too because um we again we very clearly see that this has a lot of like holdovers from Worlds Collide. So you could almost see this as like um like a Worlds Collide epilogue. Uh, I wrote that, and then I remember my next point was just how long is this issue? Because. <laughs> Because egg, this Ego War seems like a last page reveal, and then the issue just <laughs> keeps going. Yeah. Um, I feel like there's just a lot of talking about things that I don't really care about. Yeah, but so uh, Bean swipes. So uh, Amy and uh, them go to Safe Blaze. She's uh, melting the bar slowly so they can free her. Uh, Bean swipes the Soul Emerald. Everything's going to shit, and then the book ends. Uh huh. And then our off... Oh, I remember. This off panel was actually kind of fun. The off panels for this were not, like, a vast improvement, but instead of, like, groaning at them, I at least chuckled a little bit, which is more I can say for the last one. Mm-hmm. Um, but so... We move on. Part 3 of 4, uh, Pirate Plunder Panic, Sonic Universe, issue 57. Um, so, my first note here is fun opening monologue. Uh, just because it's, it's one of those monologues where it's, like, the person is listing off like all the things they've been through as um, to like catch the reader up, but it's also kind of believable for a person to just go like, "Yep, this is my life." Uh, <laughs> uh, one one note I wanted to make, but then I realized it would be kind of dumb. Is like we see here is the the first time I can remember um, that we reference Blaze's fear of heights in this story. Um, they do it a couple more times. And I was going to make a note of, like, man, you know, Blaze's Fear of Heights is fun, but they really, um, you know, only reference it, like, selectively. And then I realized, wait, you mean they reference it, like, when she's high up? That's crazy, man. But, uh, so... <laughs> it only comes up when it would be relevant? Foolish. Yeah. Fool. 
<laughs> yeah, no. But uh, no, I thought, so... yeah, I thought I thought it was cute. Like I liked that. That felt like an actual moment where uh, you just you know you had a little you had a little just like silly little moment where everybody can just kind of we can have a little reprieve. So I like that. Yeah. Yeah. But so they all escape. There's not really anything I, that needs to be said. Uh, Johnny shows up. Uh, Johnny from Sonic Rush Adventure. Uh, they all escape. There's a there's a shot that might be the thumbnail of this episode. We'll see. And then. My next note is just uh, when Metal is talking to his uh, subordinates. He just goes, find them, kill them. And I just wrote, cool line. Uh, yeah. Because, I don't know, I, I thought it was neat. Uh, find them, take them out. Yeah, we well, that, that. Would, that, would be ID, <laughs> that would be IDWs. Um, yeah. But so, essentially, they stop. And Blaze says something to the effect of, like, once I get the Soul Emeralds, uh, I'll be able to just wipe out, you know, all the pirates. And, and my note was like, wait, is Blaze planning to wipe out piracy as a concept? <laughs> it was just a weird Maybe. line. Yeah. Um, uh, damn, we, we better watch out. Those, <laughs> oh, no. Those... <laughs> hey, to be, fair to, to be fair to us, there is literally no legal way that exists right now to buy RG Sonic issues. So bite me. <laughs> fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> You cannot um, buy them physically or digitally from Archie, so... I mean, you could pay hundreds of dollars to some eBay scalper for them, but uh, I'd rather not. And he's not the official source, so screw him. Yeah, yeah. The, Archie ain't making any money from that, so... <laughs> All right. You see, this is the problem, is that I was writing these as I went along, so I wrote the note, I forgot that was a power he had, and I don't remember what I was referencing... Oh, wait, wait. No, I remember. So, essentially, Blaze and all them take control of Metal's ship. Uh, Johnny brings the Soul Emerald to Whiskers. They all meet up. A fight breaks out. And then we find out Bean can just, like, conjure bombs out of nowhere. Um, that was what that was in reference to. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, well, because I always assumed he was just pulling them out of, like, you know, the magic pocket that all cartoon characters have. But apparently it's a, literally a power he has that he can just, like, make them appear right um but so they they release the kraken so that's fun it's a it it's got kind of a boring design like when you see it in the pit it's got like these red eyes you're thinking like oh man is this gonna be like another like cross-dimensional cool thing it's it's just like a robot octopus yeah was, i mean uh it along with um captain is it whisker no that's the robot that's the eggman robot guy right um uh, yeah that's the that's that's this guy the metal I, I said this guy. guy while gesturing yeah uh captain captain metal i think is just what he's called okay yeah whenever he transforms into like his his like crawdad form i'm just like yeah <laughs> it's okay <laughs> yeah i thought he was he was cooler when he was just like metal sonic but a pirate yeah i, I agree oh Remember when Speed Battle was doing that pirate event? I mean, I don't know if they legally could still use him, but that would be cool. <laughs> um, but so they blow up the Kraken, and then the, the Soul Emerald gets passed around a little bit more, and then, until eventually Captain Metal gets it, and he has an awful, terrible final line where he goes, Ah, surly lot you are, but there's no need for, all y for ye all to be so crabby. Ye can leave that to me. Revealing okay. that he has crab legs. <laughs> Boo! Maybe, maybe, get off if, the, maybe if the arc was more silly, I would like that. <laughs> get off the stage! But uh, anyway, so that's the end of that issue. I mean, I guess he looks all right, but again, it's like, isn't Metal Sonic's whole thing to be fast? I feel like this kind of defeats the purpose. We're taking um, a new. We're taking a new way. <laughs> Um, I thought this off panel was fun where it's, I mean, it's kind of, it's almost like kind of what we were talking about, about, uh, Marine and, uh, Bean being horribly annoying in this arc. Well, they yeah. meet each other and then the universe explodes. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was fun. Um, but so, but also that, that's kind of a weird thing where it's like, wait, if you, as the person writing this are aware enough that they're annoying to write that off panel, why did you make them that annoying? <laughs> I mean, usually it's kind of like something like uh, when SpongeBob was funny, like whenever he was annoying Squidward, like he used to actually be funny. But if you take about it yeah. in the universe, like, yeah, you're being really annoying to that person. So it's, I think the idea yeah. is just simply we're trying to take it to the, the logical extreme of in-universe. <laughs> hmm. 
Speaking of which, speaking of when SpongeBob was funny, I was watching that first SpongeBob movie with my sister earlier. Still holds up. It's still fun. Good. But uh, anyway, uh, so we finally arrive. At, I feel like we've just been burning through these. Uh, yeah, there's really not that much to talk about unless we were to like really engage with like the dialogue, and I just I didn't think it was anything special. Yeah. Uh, I well, we're burning blaze through these. Eh, Perfect. Eh, all right. <clears throat> so <laughs> we arrive at Pirate Plunder Panic Part Four of Four Sonic Universe Issue Fifty Eight. I feel like I should have flipped those around, but I didn't. So, uh, it it's where everyone left off. All the characters are in the the place. They're all fighting. Blaze goes for Captain Metal. They're fighting over the thing. Uh, might have a note that just says Blaze can make a fire sword. Cool. Because um, she makes a fire sword. I don't know. Yeah. Um, she gets captured. Uh, Metal takes her to uh, his little device. The Ego. It's not really a little device. He straps her into the thing. And he's like, I'm going to suck the soul emeralds out of you. And then that combined with this last one, I'll power the Ego War. And then that'll make it so I can, like, travel through dimensions and, like, conquer stuff. It'll be super cool. Yeah. Um, And I just wrote, wait, so are the Soul Emeralds inside of her? Because in, in Treasure Team Tango, they make a point to say, like, there's, like, a hand thing she does to summon them. So I thought they were going to, like, some weird pocket dimension. Maybe the pocket dimension is in her. In the same way they, uh, they do in Sonic 06, where they just pull it out of their butts. Ah, oh, that makes sense. Um, or but in, or but in the her dimension, it's the hand because she's classy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a princess can't be doing that. Uh, it's true. But so, the characters. I mean, again, it's really just a lot of like characters running around and shouting and fighting each other. Like, but so the next, the next really important thing is that like Amy and Cream come to save Blaze. Uh, Blaze gets the final soul emerald. She transforms into Burning Blaze. It's super cool. And then yeah. she has maybe my favorite line in the book where uh, Metal is saying, like, oh, I can still beat you and I can do all this. And uh, Blaze goes, you can burn. And she just melts him. Yeah, that stuff is really good. I think the thing most of the problem the action has in this arc is mostly just it's just kind of action for the sake of action. And it says, yeah. You don't have to have meaning or anything to your fights or whatever. It could just be really cool. There's not necessarily like a gimmick to it other than these characters are running around and, and just doing what you would expect. Amy's hitting things, Blaze is shooting fire, XYZ. So what makes the burning Blaze moment hap- uh, so cool is just that it's big and over the top. And so like yeah. when it happens, you're like, oh my gosh, it's a burning Blaze! Ah! <laughs> and then you, you freak out and you're like, yeah, this is great. So I think that's just where that moment you know to for a comparison's sake that's where that moment like you know really works whereas like the rest of the arc like oh like oh no we're shooting cannonballs but amy's hitting them with her hammer oh that's really neat <laughs> like it just kind of feels like all right yeah and <laughs> yeah well and i do wonder i i do wish because i was going into this expecting it to be like a whole new thing but if i had known that it was essentially the conclusion to blaze's arc i would have reread um her stuff leading up to it because i feel like if you did read it like that if you read like you know uh, her first appearance in the whatever it was i mean i in in the first volume of the uh, sonic saga series it's like just some backup so i don't know what issue it first appeared in but you read that and then you read shadow saga that first issue then you read treasure team tango and then you read this i feel like as just like the conclusion i think it works but i feel like if you're trying to read it on its own it kind of falls a little flat um, right because you don't have like the momentum of your investment yeah but yeah, so I see what you mean. Mm-hmm. But so but burning the burning blaze moment is cool. And I do really like it. It, so. it is really cool. Well, and also it's just the logical. I, I like how they're treating it like um, because a lot of times super forms only show up when there's a comparable threat. Like you know, supersonic shows up to fight Enerjack or Perfect Chaos. So like you don't get to really see how like immeasurably powerful they are. Um, but in this, like she fights, she murders Captain Metal, and then Whiskers uh takes control of the uh the ego war and she just destroys it yeah i appreciate that it was just a complete domination yeah it was it was cool um one thing that i thought was interesting and she does her fucking like fire kamehameha to the the ego war which is awesome but so yeah. um one thing i i i'm curious about just from a lore perspective 
is that um so in Sonic it's it's pretty well known that when Sonic unsupers the uh the Chaos Emeralds scatter. But for Blaze, maybe because she's their guardian, they like have a special connection with her. She can just yeah. Keep they them. probably it's probably like if when Knuckles uh goes like when he goes super or whatever, it's like ah, he probably has like a connection to him to where they just don't yeah. leave. Yeah, it's well, like it's not like if Knuckles were to like supercharge himself on the Master Emerald, they would just like fly away after it was done. Yeah, sorry, Island. <laughs> That'd be really funny though. That would suck. Uh, though. You have to. You have to have to be a one and done. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, but that, so, which would be really funny because that would mean like you'd have to need it so bad to protect your island, but it also means that the island gets destroyed anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's it, it's so weird whenever they're talking about Angel. This is a bit of a tangent, but like sometimes they're like, if Angel Island falls, it is the end of everything. But then like you see the the beginning of Sonic Adventure and like the, the emerald shattered and literally it just goes like pfft, it just falls into the water and is fine. I guess it just depends what it's falling on to. <laughs> if it were falling well, on that's Station the... Square, that's probably not good. <laughs> yeah. Well, and what's it? Well, and one thing that like I don't know if this is. I assume that this isn't a thing in the games. I assume it's just a th it just stays in one place. But I know at least in preboot, it had like a flight path. Like it would. Yeah, it, it would go around. around. I think I think it moves around in in like normal canon as well. No, uh, I, I always I think, assumed it was just I kind of floating so. in one spot. It could be. Um, um, but I, it one hundred percent in a preboot, it had a flight pattern. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, because I remember, because I have like some copy of Sonic Archives, they have like the map of Mobius, and it shows the flight pattern. Um, oh, that's cool. But so they, uh, we end the the arc here. Uh, you know, they're like, oh well, you know, I I got all the Soul Emeralds. It's super cool. Uh, also, real quick, you you know those like um. The, those compilations you'll see where it's like find someone who looks at you the way blank looks at blank. Yeah. <laughs> you could absolutely make one of those for, for Amy looking at Blaze in this story. <laughs> There's one particular shot I'm looking at that's near the end of this uh, this issue where she's just it's... it's I don't ship it, but like you could definitely read into it. But so... I, I don't ship it, but you could ship it. And you should you ship it. <laughs> I mean no, no judgment here. The, the thumbnail of this podcast will almost certainly be Blaze Amy bait. So, like, you know. Of course. How else are we going to get people to watch after the horrendous first episode? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, but so, that was just kind of mean, Ian. I mean, nobody wants to listen to a ghost. It's it's really an insult towards me. I shouldn't have done oh, it. That was I my see. fault. I see. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, just you got to be more careful with your microphone and your chocolate milk, man. Like, I, Yeah, that's true. I, I'm glad you remember the lore. Because uh, <laughs> yeah, I course. don't. <laughs> you don't well, I was the one who said it. So. Uh, okay. Cool. 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 But yeah, and then uh, they send they send the kiddos home, and you get a nice little cute scene where uh, Marine cries, and I was yeah. like, yeah, it's cute. Uh, well, and one thing, there's a line where Amy says, uh, she says like, I get the feeling home is never going to be the same again. And I just went, yes, thank you for reminding me, Amy. <laughs> thank you for reminding me that the the book I loved for all intents and purposes is dead. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, but so then, yeah, we get that scene. They get sent home. Uh, and then I just wrote, dun, dun, dun. Because we see that the egg, whatever it's called, is is still at least somewhat operational. Uh, does that yeah. ever get followed up on? The egg of war being operational? Yeah. Uh, no. But it probably, w it almost certainly would have um, pretty soon afterwards. Because the Sonic Universe story that was going to be set up for after the end of reboot before it got canceled was um, uh, we were going to have like four, it was Sonic universe and it was going to set up like four different stories to get their own other Sonic universe stories. So one of them was um, uh, bunny going to the soul dimension. So I would assume it, oh. it probably would have been followed up then. Oh, dang, that would have been fun. You, you know yeah, what you're doing to me right now? Ian? Or, there was going to be you're... a new origin story for bunny where she was from the soul dimension. You know what you're doing to me right now, Ian? You're making me into that guy who gets into a TV show like five years after it's canceled, canceled and it's like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like that with Young Justice, and then it came back, and it's not as good now. But anyway, topic for another day. So they get back, and there's a b weird bit of inconsistency, which the fact that I now know these were written by two different people makes it make a little more sense. Where Amy, she's talking like like this world is wrong and like she's the preboot Amy. But when we see her in the make, she's acting like this world is the way it's always been. And she's shocked to learn about the old universe. 
Um, which yeah, no, you're right. I mean, the the way you could probably justify it is just simply like. Like how you said, like, oh, maybe Blaze's world was less affected. So it's like maybe when she was still there, it was kind of like in this in-between phase. But then once they got transferred over, it's like, oh, it's different now. That's the only way I could really see it working. The only reason I bring this up is because I I don't remember what the the dialogue was. But the way she says it um, when she gets here is like, things seem a little off here. I don't know why I gave her that voice. But anyway, um, so that's the end of that. And then we get the off panel. Uh, I just wrote, yay, Sylvais. And then it ends. Such bringing an end to uh, P- P- Pirate Plunder Panic. I forgot what it was called for a second. <laughs> Alliteration. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It's, uh... o- overall, it's not terrible or anything. I think it has a good climax. Um, but for me, it's just one of those things where I don't like Bean. I don't really like Marine. Uh, and I usually do like Marine and Bean, but I just didn't think they were funny in this. And then... Um, I just think in general the combat and like kind of the action focus of the arc doesn't really carry it for me because I'm just not that interested in it. Um, yeah, but uh, it's not terrible. Like I'd give it like a five. Like it's average. Yeah, I don't know. Again, again, I feel like as I said before that so far having read a total of two arcs of uh, reboot and one of them being Countdown to Chaos. Um, this is like the one arc I would be I would recommend to a, a preboot purist, um, just because again it, it it wraps up that that you know whole blaze uh, looking for the Soul Emeralds arc, uh, which I always just yeah. assumed they they dropped. Um, yeah, so it was cool that it got brought in. But yeah, so I mean, I really yeah, like I I'm again I said this last week I'm you're the number score guy. Uh, I would I would give it the stamp of recommended. I recommend this. It's 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 decent. Yeah, recommended um, out of 10. Yeah. But so, uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, next week, when we come back, we will be talking about the main book again. We will be doing uh, the one-issue arc of Damage Control, and then we will be doing The Chase. So, uh, if you want to stay up to date on that, uh, be sure to subscribe. Uh, if you enjoyed this podcast, please uh, leave a like and leave a comment. Uh, we had one guy comment on the last one, and I appreciate you. I'm gonna yes, look up your name. To do so. I'm I'm gonna look up your name because I forget the Blue Wind. We appreciate you. Uh, if more more of you could do that, that YouTube especially the algorithm would like that very much. But I would like that very much, and Ian might like that very much. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that'd be dope. But so uh, yeah, not much more to say. Uh, Ian, you have any? You want to plug your plug your channel real quick before we go? Yeah, once again, my channel is Ian Waffles. Uh, if um, just video analysis stuff interests you, then I'd, I'd love to have you there and have you check it out. But otherwise, I'll probably just be back here and talking about Sonic and doing all that all that kind of stuff with the Silver Ace. So if you're looking forward to that, you know, there'll be more on the way. Smash that subscribe button. But uh, I hate myself. Right now. Anyway, so uh, yeah, uh, until next time, uh, take care, everyone. See you guys. Like anyone who's coming here for Burning Blaze would already come anyway. So that don't take that out of context.